Some dictators said it with flowers, others with flowery language, but when it came to sealing diplomatic alliances, Adolf Hitler said it with cars. Throughout the 1930s and 40s, Hitler presented cars to many leaders that he wished to cosy up to, and not just in Europe but all across the world. It made sense to give them cars, for Germany was the nation that had invented the car, and was, and still is, renowned for the quality of those vehicles. So it is no surprise that Hitler chose his favourite manufacturer, Mercedes-Benz, to give away as gifts. Hitler only used custom-built Mercedes-Benz limousines as his official vehicles, huge, heavily armoured 550k and 770k limousines, all painted midnight blue and designed to withstand small arms fire or bomb damage. Now a quick word from our sponsor. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbour. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and they look at the problem in a different way. Fume is an innovative, award-nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapour, Fume uses flavoured air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural, delicious flavours. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. It feels great, it's well weighted, perfectly balanced and extremely fun to fidget with. Join fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash Mark Felton to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. In 1934, he presented a 500k Autobahn courier to the Shah or Emperor of Iran, who also loved cars. One of only six built by Mercedes-Benz, the Shah's cream and green 500k is today the only one of its kind in existence, the other five examples all being destroyed in World War II. Mercedes attempted to buy the Shah's car after he was deposed in 1979, keen to have it in their own museum. But Iran refused, and today it is one of the star attractions at the Iran Historical Car Museum in Tehran, the collection almost entirely assembled from the fleet of expensive vehicles that the Shah amassed during his reign. In 1935, Hitler received a very unusual visitor, an Indian prince, who was very keen to meet him. Maharaja Bhupinda Singh was the princely ruler of the Indian state of Patiala, an immensely rich area the north of British India. The Maharaja loved luxury, and in particular cars, having a fleet of 24 Rolls Royces. He also travelled frequently, and in 1935 was in Germany, and demanded a meeting with Hitler. The Führer grudgingly agreed to meet, scheduling a simple 15-minute hello, but this turned into a one-hour chat. Hitler seemed to form some kind of notion that perhaps allying with the Maharaja in the event of war between Germany and Great Britain was possible. Two further meetings took place. Hitler ordered a very rare 1933 Maybach DS-8 Zeppelin limousine to be sent to the Maharaja as a token of his friendship. The five-and-a-half-metre-long car could accommodate seven passengers. The white, 12-litre Maybach was duly shipped to Patiala, but the death of the Maharaja in 1938, at the age of only 46, and the outbreak of World War II a year later, meant that for the rulers of Patiala, now at war with Germany, as India was part of the British Empire, the beautiful Maybach was an embarrassment. It was placed in storage at the Mortebag Palace and eventually given away as a gift to a prominent Patiala official. After the war, it passed through several owners until sold at auction in Denmark in 2015 for several million dollars to an anonymous buyer. In 1938, Hitler gifted another splendid motor car to a monarch, this time as a wedding gift to a possible future ally. Egypt was not formally part of the British Empire, but since 1882 it had been informally known as the Veiled Protectorate. The primary reasons were the strategically vital Suez Canal that drastically reduced the journey time between the UK and India and Britain's other Asian colonies, and also the important British naval base at Alexandria. British forces would remain in Egypt until 1956. 
Hitler was probably thinking ahead to war with Britain and how to undermine certain parts of the British Empire as he had with the Maharaja of Patiala when he sent King Farouk I of Egypt a Mercedes 540K. Like the Shah of Iran, Farouk was car mad and spent vast sums on acquiring a huge collection of luxury vehicles while most of his subjects lived in poverty. With a supercharged 180 horsepower 5401 cc engine, the 540k had a top speed in excess of 100 miles per hour, and the car received an honoured place in Farouk's enormous range of over 100 luxury vehicles. It was repainted red, as the king liked all of his cars to be red, and indeed he banned all commoners from owning red cars. The interior and the hood were of beige leather. Farouk was forced to abdicate in 1952, living in exile in Monaco and Italy, his incredible car collection left behind in Cairo. The 540K remained untouched and in storage until 1988, when the Egyptian government put it up for auction, it being purchased by a French collector. In 1996, it was sent to Germany to be restored. It still retains 90% of its original parts today. In May 2006, Farouk's 540K was auctioned in Monaco, selling for just under a million euros. In 1939, Hitler gifted another Mercedes to an hereditary ruler, this time at one of the world's most inaccessible places, the Himalayas. Nepal is a small landlocked country in the high Himalayas between Tibet and India. Since 1816, its famous Gurkha hill tribesmen have served voluntarily in the British armies, most notably in World War I and II, and continue to serve today in both the British and Indian armies. The King of Nepal had traditionally had a good relationship with the British. However, Hitler presented a Mercedes-Benz to Judah Shumshar Rana, King Trubuvan's hereditary Prime Minister, in an effort to keep Nepal out of the coming war between Germany and Britain. Like the King, the Prime Ministers of Nepal were hereditary and extremely powerful. He was brought to Nepal by the unusual expedient of being carried across mountains and rivers by 60 porters on a huge bamboo raft, as no paved roads existed at the time outside of the capital Kathmandu. The Prime Minister and the King used the Mercedes until the King's death in 1955, after which it was placed in storage, and was latterly given to a technical college to help train mechanics. It ended up rusty and neglected, and somewhat damaged, in storage at Narayanhiti Palace until the abolition of the monarchy in 2008. The government announced that the car may be restored for public display at the palace, which is now a museum. One of the most notable gifts of a car by Hitler during World War II was a Mercedes given to Finland's leader, Marshal Gustav Mannerheim. The huge 770K armoured limousine, the same as that used by Hitler himself, was given to Mannerheim to thank him for allying Finland with Nazi Germany against the Soviet Union, Finland having fought a bitter winter war against the Soviets, losing some of its territory in the process. With the coming invasion of the Soviet Union, Mannerheim saw an opportunity to regain those lost territories, and therefore supported Nazi Germany. And though they did recover the lost Finnish territory, the Finns advanced no further. The 20-foot-long midnight blue car was used to carry Hitler to and from the airport when he visited Finland in 1942. Among the rarest cars in the world, Mannerheim's 770K Gwalser W150 Offener Tourenwagen weighs 5 tons. It is identical to Hitler's armoured 770Ks for the simple reason that it was originally built for the Führer. Mannerheim later broke with Germany and made peace with the Soviets in 1944. The Hitler car was therefore a bit of an embarrassment, and it was sold off to a Swedish businessman after World War II. He, in turn, sold it to an American in 1948, who brought it to the US, where it was misidentified as Hitler's personal car, and in this guise, toured the US for over a decade, raising hundreds of thousands of dollars for charity. Today it is owned and displayed by the Lion Air Museum's automotive section in Orange County, California. Hitler would gift other Mercedes-Benz 770Ks, some armoured, some standard models, to various European allies and friends during the war, including Marshal Ion Antonescu of Romania, General Francisco Franco of Spain, 
and the leader of the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia, Emil Hacha. The latter car is currently owned by the Wheatcroft Collection in the UK. While a Mercedes-Benz Cabriolet F used by Hacha originally was in Norway during the German occupation, probably belonging to the Reich Commissioner of Norway, Josef Terboven. Today it is in a museum in Prague. Regarding Norway, two Mercedes 770Ks were there during the war, one notoriously gifted to Vidkun Quisling, the leader of Norway. The liberation of Norway in 1945 saw Quisling's car become in effect toxic property. Quisling would be executed for his collaboration with the Nazis. Though put up for sale for an astonishingly low price, no one wanted to buy Quisling's 770K and this stunning car was scrapped. The second 770K that was in Norway at the end of the war had been used by General Nikolaus von Falkenhorst, who commanded German troops in the country, and it was given to the King of Norway for his use after the war. It was eventually sold to an American collector, and today this car is also in the United States. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.